Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, let's talk gambling with regard to the show that took place at Wembley. It was a blockbuster. It looked like it was a very special atmosphere on TV. 80,000 fans. Boxing at times just hits a certain level that other sports simply cannot match. The excitement, the anticipation, it was all there. I thought the event was a very special one. Now, let's talk gambling. Let me first talk briefly about the undercard fight. James DeGale, a minus 500 favorite, delivered. Right, so you should have made a 20% profit in that fight. DeGale won by fourth round KO. We'll talk about the styles at the end of the video. Right, let me get to the main event. Now, we swung for the fences. I personally thought before the fight took place that George Grove should win it. Right? But the hedge held. The hedge was frotched by KO, and there you got a plus 130. If you bet even money, and keep in mind, you don't have to. Right? You can structure your bet to maximize profit. But if you bet even money on both sides of the play, right? Half on Grove simply to win half on Frotch by Kale, the hedge. Then you would have won on the plus 130. You would have netted a 15% profit on that fight, right? Frotch got the Kale in the eighth round. But as they replay this fight, let's look at the mechanics of the fight. Let's leave the mainstream for a second. Let's look at the mechanics of the fight what I want you to do is I want you to look at George Groves' left jab to Frotch's body. Not when he throws it up top, but when he throws it to Frotch's body. Folks, in my opinion, this fight could have been an easy fight for George Groves. He doesn't seem to discover that left jab to the body until later in the fight. Right When he starts to throw that left jab to Frotch's body, Frotch, who keeps his right hand too low and who doesn't have the reflexes. Right, Let me repeat that. Frotch keeps his right hand too low and he doesn't have the reflexes. Frotch was getting hit methodically with that left hand to the body. Right, In my opinion... George Groves could have thrown that punch and nothing else and could have walked away with the W. Why even throw the right hand? Frotch is keying on the right hand, trying to counter. Why throw hooks even? You have the foot speed advantage on Carl. Carl concedes that George Groves had the faster hands. Folks, we know George Groves has the faster feet, right? What the jab allows you to do is it allows you to keep distance while you throw it. Not only that, if you're focused on throwing a jab, that should keep you off of the ropes. What is George Groves doing in the eighth round over by the ropes with his hands as low as they are. Let's go through the knockdown. The knockout. Carl Frotch throws a left. Right? It's a perfunctory left. George Groves lifts his hand to block it. Lifts his right hand, right? Lifts his hand to block it. Q 
furiously, even though he's fighting a right-handed fighter with a great right hand. George Groves has nothing here on this side of his face to block the punch. Carl Frotch doesn't even have to squeeze that right hand through a small window. What exactly was Groves' game plan up on the ropes? In the pre-fight video, I talked about how I wanted George Groves to use his legs. Being up on the ropes, standing there, was not what I had in mind. Right? What I want you to do too, other than focus on the effectiveness of Groves' left jab to the body, it's obvious in the seventh round. It's obvious. Listen to the announcers. They'll start saying, Groves getting his groove back. You know, Groves getting back in this fight. Right? In addition to focusing on that left jab to the body, what I want you to do is to focus on Groves' plant leg, right? His left leg. Let's analyze his footwork for a moment. Right now, when you watch Floyd Mayweather, and yes, I'm mentioning Floyd Mayweather because, quite frankly, that's how it's done, right? When you notice Floyd Mayweather, he's not right in front of his opponents a lot of the time. He makes sure that left foot, the lead foot, is to the right from his vantage point of his opponent's lead foot. Right? What that does is it places Floyd outside of harm's way. If you're fighting Floyd, you have to find him. Right? This is when Mayweather's not on the ropes, and I guarantee you when you see Mayweather with his back up against the ropes leaning, you'll notice he's also leaning at the waist. You'll notice that if you're going to land anything on Mayweather, you have to throw it through tight windows. But let's get back to the footwork for a second. Look at George Groves' front foot. His left is not to the right of Carl Frotch's front foot. Why isn't it? He's the better athlete than Carl Frotch. He moves better than Carl Frotch. He has the foot speed advantage than Carl Frotch. Not only that, his most effective punch is that left to the body. Why isn't Groves' front foot to the right of Carl Frotch's front foot? In fact, why is Groves so in front of Carl Frotch, didn't we know that Frotch's only hope in this fight was to win it by KO? What I want you to do is look online. I'll concede Carl Frotch likely wins the fifth and sixth rounds. Okay, fair enough. I didn't give Carl Frotch any other rounds in the fight. I thought George Groves was ahead on points. I thought George Groves, for some odd reason, was trading too much with Carl Frotch. Right? As I've said in other videos, do you want to make a statement or do you want to win the fight? Understand, if Groves had focused on shooting a jab, and on getting his footwork right, so he's off at the side. Shoot the jab, get out. Shoot the jab, get out. Then his feet would have been wide apart. They wouldn't have been together like they were with him up on the ropes. He wouldn't have been up on the ropes. I thought he fought a bad fight. As he looks at the replay, he's going to realize, in my opinion, that he left this fight on the table. This is the second consecutive Carl Frotch-George Groves fight that, in my opinion, George Groves 
had the capability of winning. Now he didn't win it. Part of boxing is mental. Carl Froch closed the distance between himself and Groves, had Groves up on the ropes. Let's think about that for a second. What's Groves doing up on the ropes? Carl didn't stun him before the right that ends the fight. I would argue that George Groves, curiously, is up on the ropes voluntarily. And he's up on the ropes voluntarily with low hands. Right? Think about it. Right? I'm, I'm utterly bewildered as to what Groves was trying to accomplish. In fact, as you look at the seventh round, take a look at when Carl fights back. It's when Groves is throwing hooks and right hands. Do you need to throw any? Right? Why not continue to hit Carl to the body and move away? What I want you to do too is look at Carl Froch's front foot, his front foot. Right? You're going to see that Carl Froch is wooden legged compared to George Groves. Froch is just not fluid. That jab that people are writing about post fight. Folks, it wasn't that good. I know he throws it more than he did the first fight. But in my opinion, Carl Froch still loses the early rounds. Right? George Groves is not busted up over a jab. George Groves, when he concentrated, could get in and out effectively throwing that left jab to the body. He was able to also throw it up top. But the point is, the jab that should have been working in the fight was George Groves' jab. Maybe it's youth. Maybe it's too much exuberance. But George Groves left this fight in the ring. Let me point out that Carl Froch has a tell. You can tell. It's not his punches. It's his feet. Carl Froch is not quick with that right hand. He has to be set up. Things have to slow down for him to throw that right hand. He seems to be able to throw a long-range uppercut. He didn't do it in this fight, but I've seen him do it in other fights. More readily than he can throw that straight right hand. But my point to you is George Grove should have been focused on Carl Froch's front leg because it lets you know when Froch is comfortable enough to throw that right hand. And let me point out, Grove should have been moving more, using his feet, using his foot speed advantage to force Carl to lift that front leg and then have to reset. Right? Because Carl Froch, quite frankly, isn't the most fluid fighter out there. Now let's talk about what I expect to happen. The gambler should have been protected even though Groves didn't win the fight because he got a plus 130 on Froch by KO. Let me talk about what I think is going to happen. There is no way in my mind that Carl Froch is going to be silly enough to ever fight James DeGale. I don't even consider that fight to be a hard fight for James DeGale. In my mind, the best 168 pounder in the United Kingdom has been and remains James DeGale. Maybe the cops will take me away because of that, but the James DeGale fight against Brandon Gonzalez is riveting. Understand DeGale, I know he does some things in an unorthodox fashion, right? That jab is really kind of like a paw. But one of the things that James DeGale does that leaves him with few peers is he's able to adjust to angles quickly. Right now, I know James DeGale at times throws wide punches. But here, I'm telling you, he figured out early he had to go very wide with his left hand. 
Just focus on the left hand against Brandon Gonzalez. He figured out that Gonzalez, who came in with a clever plan to work the Gale's body, right? He figured out that Gonzalez had no clue how to defend the Gale's wide left hand. It's unorthodox. Right? Gonzalez gets hit with that wide left hand repeatedly. Keep in mind, too, the Gale is a southpaw. Or at least he fights out of an orthodox stance. So the Gale is winging a wide left hand that's getting through Brandon Gonzalez's defense. The other problem, too, is while Gonzalez did have some, some success inside, James DeGale knows how to fight inside, right? Dare I say Brandon Gonzalez would have had more success with that game plan against Carl Frotch, who can't. But James DeGale can. Let me also say, too, if you want to see a beautiful combination, and I mean beautiful, go to the fourth round of the DeGale fight. Right, the Gales combination is dazzling. The combination that drops Brandon Gonzalez. There's no question the fight stopped prematurely after Gonzalez gets back to his feet. Right, Gonzalez is lucid. Gonzalez is defending himself. Gonzalez is trying to clear his head. I thought all of that was allowed in boxing. But moments before the stoppage, Gonzalez gets dropped and he gets dropped hard. And it's a great combination that takes place across half the diameter of the ring. Right? James DeGale starts it. It involves an uppercut. Then as Gonzalez moves backwards, he staggered backwards. James DeGale showing spectacular accuracy in ring generalship takes a step forward throws a wide left hand that hits Gonzalez on the button, right? I think Carl Frotch is going to try to fight in Las Vegas against a different opponent. He has two belts, quite frankly, at this stage of Carl Frotch's career. And don't get me wrong, I'm a Frotch fan. As people know here, I took Frotch in fights when Frotch was unpopular years ago. Right? But I'll say this. Carl Frotch simply doesn't have the inside game to be competitive with, with James DeGale. Right? Carl Frotch simply won't be able to handle the angles that James DeGale throws at him. Right? I know George Groves beat James DeGale. That was a different George Groves. That was a George Groves that used his legs. Right? I don't believe George Groves today can beat James DeGale. Right? I think Carl Frotch will be prepared. I know DeGale's demandatory. I know Frotch is on the clock and only has 120 mm -hmm. days. I know Frotch against DeGale. A proven champion against a British Olympic gold medalist would pull tens of thousands of fans in the United Kingdom. Right? But, I believe Carl Frotch would rather lose a belt, would rather be stripped of a belt, and fight someone else for lucrative money. Mikael Kessler, perhaps Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. By the way, let me just say, he needs to be careful of Chavez Jr. Right, I know I've been critical of Chavez Jr. here online, but Chavez Jr. can fight inside. Understand, Chavez Jr. can get inside of Frotch's long jab and can make this a war of attrition from the inside. I'm not sure if Frotch is ready for that. Right? Frotch is a guy who often is grabbing an opponent and is trying to hit them on the side of the head in clinches. 
right? That's hard to do when a guy is working over your body on the inside. Let's also not kid ourselves. Chavez Jr. hits hard, right? Rewatch the 12th round of his fight against Sergio Martinez, right? So, Frotch needs to be careful. But I believe Frotch wants to be viewed as the best at 168 in his country, the United Kingdom. Right? At this point in his career, I don't believe he'll want to jeopardize that by fighting James the Gale. Right? I think the Gale is going to have to fight an elimination match against somebody else, possibly George Groves, right? For one of Frotch's belts. Frotch has multiple belts. I believe Frotch is going to view the rest of his career as just an opportunity to climb the mountains he hasn't climbed yet. He has unfinished business with Mikael Kessler. Their series is officially 1-1. Right? Frotch also knows that there's not the foot speed gap with Kessler that he has with George Groves, right? Frotch might want to play in Vegas. If he's going to play in Vegas, the biggest draw at 168 in Vegas, if he doesn't want to fight Andre Ward, right? And let's face it, his promoter, Eddie Hearn, is using every excuse in the book to argue that Frotch doesn't have to fight Andre Ward. If he's not going to fight Andre Ward, the only other cash cow at 168 who can fill up the MGM Grand Arena in Vegas would be Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right? But view me as a skeptic as to whether we'll be talking about a Frotch James DeGale fight, even though they both have the same promoter, in the months to come. I think DeGale has a superior footwork, is a superior athlete, has a superior inside game, makes the superior adjustments, I think the Gale would sweep the early rounds, right? And I don't believe the Gale would be silly enough to be up against the ropes against a right-handed fighter, right? With his left hand as low as George Groves had his. Right? That was just ridiculous. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. You tell me how you scored the fight at the time of the stoppage. You tell me what you believe George Groves' best punch was in the fight. I believe it's the left to the body. I don't think Carl Frotch, who had to kind of expose himself, to offset the speed difference. Right? You know, he's shooting a jab and stuff. Frotch had to get out of his shell a little bit because of the foot speed and hand speed difference. Right? I don't think Frotch had a defensive answer for Groves' jab to the body. I don't. The seventh round should have been how Groves fought the rest of the fight. Maybe he should have moved a little bit more, right? I would have liked to have seen lateral movement because, in my opinion, you know, Carl Frotch likes to plant that front leg, force him to pick it up and move it, right? You know, why not stick and move, right? Let me also say, too, I have no complaints over the stoppage. If you want to know the bad shape George Groves was in, just look at his left leg when he hits the canvas. It's bent awkwardly. He is out. I know he starts to come to, and I know there's going to be an argument that, you know, shouldn't he get a 10 count and stuff like that. Let's just say, conscious, he was up on the ropes with no defense for a straight right hand. Right? I don't think his defense was going to improve the rest of that round. I don't think Groves would have survived the rest of that round. The referee may have protected years of Groves' career. He could have been badly hurt had that fight continued. Anyway, let me hear from you. 
Thanks for stopping by.